So today we're going to one of my very favorite passages and um, Romans chapter five. And so what I wanna do is give you the context then so that that's helps you to figure out how to do the context a little bit. Let's just fix this. Okay. I'm gonna give you the context. And the second thing I wanna do is, um, I think I'm really back with this. There we go. Okay, so the second thing I wanna do is, um, talk a little bit about verse one of chapter five. So first of all, the context, it's an interesting context. Chapter four, uh, starting in verse 12, now nah, I'm going the wrong direction. There we go, that looks much better. Starting in verse 13. For the promise to Abraham or his descendants that he would inherit the world is not through the law, but the righteousness that comes by faith. And so the context before is about how Abraham didn't have the law and he was considered to be righteous because he believed God's promises. And Paul explains very carefully what that means in the story of Abraham. And so your context before is how Abraham was considered righteous because he believed God's promises. There's your context. And so that you understand, everyone in the Old Testament was saved, not based on whether they obeyed the law, but based upon whether or not they trusted in the promise of God that he was going to send them a Messiah. And, and for Abraham, it was that God was going to bless all the nations of the earth through his descendant, his seed. And for Moses, it was a promise of a Messiah. And for David, it was the promise that David's descendant was going to reign forever and ever. That's another promise of the Messiah. And when they believed the promises about the Messiah, they were saved. And that's interesting because that's exactly what it is for us. It isn't the work we do. It isn't the way we go to church. It isn't the way we pray. It isn't the way we obey the law. None of those things save us. It's do we believe the promises of God about the Messiah, Jesus Christ? So the same way that they were saved in the Old Testament is exactly the way we were saved. It's through faith in the promises of God. Well, that's really helpful to know. All right, now let's just go a little further here. Let's do the context afterwards. Context afterwards is a comparison of Adam and Jesus Christ. So your context is going to be how Adam brought sin into the world and how Jesus Christ brought grace into the world and forgiveness into the world and righteousness into the world. So Adam brings sin and death into the world through his act of disobedience to God. And Jesus Christ brings righteousness and peace with God and life eternal through his obedience to go to the cross and to rise from the dead on the third day. So it's a comparison between Adam and Jesus Christ. Adam bringing death through his sin, Jesus Christ bringing righteousness and peace with God through his cross. So that's the contrast. So you've got, the context, sorry. So you've got before, it's Abraham and his faith. Afterwards, it's Adam and versus Jesus Christ and what they did. Now let's go to the actual passage. Therefore, since we've been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God. Now, I'm going to bring in a different version here, because I really think we need the version that we're used to, that we're actually using today. Now that we have been put right with God, it's saying the same thing, it's just saying it in simpler language. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that we have been put right with God through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So how do I get peace with God? Was well, through Jesus Christ. And how does that come? Well, it's by faith. Notice it says we've been put right with God through faith. Now, when it says we have peace with God, it means we have peace with God if we believe in Jesus. If we know that there's no place else that we can go, if we have been convinced there is no work we can do. There's nothing we can ever come up with, no action we can ever take that will make us right before God. 
that, that the only place we can go is Jesus, that the only person we can turn to is Jesus, that the only action we can do is Jesus, believing in Jesus. If that's our conviction, then we have peace with God. We are made right with God through our faith that only Jesus can bring us peace with God. And if, if, if we have that assurance, then we truly have peace, not the kind of peace that we have where God hasn't destroyed me today, even though he should have, not that kind of peace, but the kind of peace that if God's glory appeared outside of wherever you're sitting right now, you could walk right into the glory of God and not be destroyed. Now, anyone apart from Christ would be destroyed because God is holy and his light is inapproachable. You can't approach his glory. But if you have peace with God, you have peace with God. I don't care what you are. You have peace with God. If you realize I have nowhere else to go, I have no one else to turn to, I have nothing else I can do, it's only Jesus, you have peace with God. And so that's what it means when it says we've been made, put right with God through faith. That faith is believing there's nowhere else to go, no one else to turn to, nothing else I can do. All I have is Jesus. I hope this makes sense to you. Have a great day.